All right. We are back once again with Let's Talk Antiques. And um, Ray's not going to be with us again today. Um, He's uh, still having some little problems, so I guess it'll be me and you again, Philip. Just Um, the two of us. Yeah, I don't know how that's going over, but uh, (laughs) we do our best. I say, you know, we're like, you know, we we got added on, you know, since I've been here. So uh, yeah, hey, you so just got you, recruited it's, it's, anyway. It's like it's like we've we've uh, ousted everybody. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we just kicked them all out. <laughs> so we can do what we want to do now. There you go. So what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to talk to you about um, old reel to reel players and eight track players and cassette players and and the tapes and. And what they're bringing, and know everybody's got some of those laying around, and be interested to know what yours is worth. And um, uh, Philip is uh, going to kick us off here with reel to reels, something he knows a lot about because he worked with them for a long time. I say, uh, Ronnie had some stuff pulled up when I came in that was the uh, the two inch tape machines, which are what I used to use in the recording studio, which shows how old I am. Because right when I when I left Nashville, everything was everything was pretty much changing over to uh, to d- digital recording, and uh, but everybody still had a, a two inch tape machine in the studio just because you know they recorded on it for forty years probably well, fifty years you know not hardly any right. physical medium left is yeah. it so know. so and and a lot of work was was transferring stuff from two inch tape to to digital formats I say that is them. a lot so, of work yeah. you know because god there's a lot of stuff out there sure and let's say so uh so i saw some stuff on on uh on the screen where mtr <clears throat> 90s which are the the big two inch tape machine uh going for thirty five hundred and forty five hundred dollars on on ebay and other <clears throat> sites and these things were thirty forty thousand dollars when when i was using them and it's just amazing that mm-hmm. that you can pick one up for a tenth of the price yeah when i was crazy. looking at that last night i was thinking god they're bringing a lot of money and then i walk in and philip says oh gosh look how cheap those things are yeah well i'm, I'm talking about the two inch ones now that you've you've got the quarter inch machines pulled up there too which, right. which were the home versions back in the in the 60s and early 70s if you had a really awesome uh sound system at home you had a real real that was machine. about all i knew was right. the uh, home systems and uh so with the uh but i was i was thinking these two inch machines are just crazy how cheap they are man i'd love to love to have one of these but i don't really have a use reason for it just other than man these things seem like they're cheap <laughs> yeah uh, a little bit of history it says they were big they were heavy and if you insisted on taking one to college your parents would try every trick in the book to dissuade you. <laughs> but for a while, from the late 50s to the late 60s, the reel-to-reel tape decks and recorders was the only way you could capture live sound or make copies of pre-recorded music on vinyl records. It says one of the most legendary names in tape recorders was Ampex. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the model 601 came with its own carrying case and remains an icon of the form. Then the Sony TC-377 and Tech A-1250 were the workhorse of the 70s as they were more compact reel-to-reels made by Pioneer. The company's RT-701 and RT-707 was given a design upgrade in the A's um, as the GX-77. Hmm. So, what can you tell us about that? All right. Well, uh, well, the uh, the quarter inch <clears throat> machines, like I say, that was they <clears throat> were they were your more you know consumer level. Uh, I pulled some stuff up on eBay and now quarter inch machine. Does that refer to the size of the tape? Yeah, how wide the tape is, because mm-hmm. uh, quarter inch was was <clears throat> uh, that meant it usually usually had two tracks, um, left and right, and uh, right. and so you could. Uh, you could have that on the reel. It would be usually you'd have about thirty minutes on a reel, depending on how what speed they would go inches per second, seven and a half, fifteen, and thirty 
Ips. I and guess, well, two tracks is all you needed for home because right. uh, when you were recording, you needed yeah. multiple tracks to dub with. But then when you were listening to them, you only needed a left and a right. Right, and the um, the deal <clears> with like the eight track cartridges, those were only those were quarter inch tape, but they squeezed eight eight heads onto the uh, onto the player. So uh, so that's why. And when you when you would push the button, the program button, and it would change from one one track to the other, what it was is it was like physically moving the head. Actually, those, huh. most of them didn't have, you know, still only had two 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 playback tracks or mm -hmm. on the head, but then you would actually the head would actually move. I did not know that. I so, learned something every day. So some of that's the, one of the issues with those. <laughs> <laughs> one of the issues with yeah. them. Yeah, what, sometimes, the heads sometimes have problems get, with heads. You'd get stuck on on the track, you know, and that's that's all you could listen to. Was if you had an eight track tape with, you know, Simon and Garfunkel, you could only listen to the first half of side one, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you know, we was talking before the show. You know, a lot of people are out there. They're looking for these old um, eight track machines and uh, and the cassette players. To go in their cars, they came with those. Right, you need your vintage. You got to go all the way. They're looking for the one that came in their cars. So, mm -hmm. if you have some of those out there, you know you may want to. Getting rare. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they're already pretty rare. Looking to sell them. Which on a on an off <laughs> note, just this last week, I ran across a thing that there's this a band called Ghost. They're like a Norwegian metal band kind of thing. And uh, and some reason I, I was just skimming across an article and I saw that their new album is coming <clears throat> out on vinyl, uh, download, CD, cassette, and eight track, and that is the first new thing that I've seen on eight track in forever. And give it to a Norwegian metal band. Yeah, I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't think of you know why they would want to put them out on eight tracks. You know. Cause you can't sell very many nowadays. There's not a lot of players left I mean, out there. Maybe it's maybe it's a big thing in Norway. Maybe yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll, have to, we'll have to look into that. So on that note, you've got us some pulled up there. Uh, I've got some. So if you have a new old stock, uh, <clears throat> Craig Pioneer car, uh, eight track, uh, car stereo player, uh, the. Some a guy got eight bids for it and sold for three hundred and five dollars for his old eight track. Now it's new old stock, so that would mean it was still in the box. Wow! Now that was for his eight track, right? Yeah. And here's another one that's a uh, uh, a vintage months uh, eight track player, excellent condition. And it's been serviced, so this has been used. But um, and I've never even heard of Munt's brand before. But the buy mm -hmm. it now on that was two twenty nine fifty, and that's they sold it for that. Wow! And then here's a bunch of in box. Uh, somebody sold all of theirs. Uh, they were uh, new old stock. Vintage Panasonic FM AM car stereo eight track player new in box, and they had a uh, they had five <laughs> six of them. And they sold them. Well, five of them sold for one seventy-five for the buy it now, and then one of them sold for one fifty. Maybe that was his his tester. That sounds Just cheap, doesn't sure. it? For I don't new know, old I mean, stock. For, for an eight-track player, it sounds like a lot. Uh, yeah, <laughs> now, I've got one here for a sixty-seven or sixty-eight Pontiac full size and GTO factory oh. original eight-track tape player, three hundred and fifty dollars. Whoa! On a buy it now. I've uh, got another uh, Pioneer 8-track, uh, car 8-track player, new with box. Uh, $150 was to buy it now on that. Here's a, uh, a vintage Craig 8-track player, uh, model 3145. Uh, never used, comes with a box in plastic. 22 bids on that went for $122.50. Back in the day, I thought that Craig was a real machine. Yeah. In the Pioneer. Oh, yeah, I had a, I had a Craig 8-track player back in, the, yeah. back in the day. Yeah. that's When I was in second grade, I <clears throat> sold, uh, we were like a school fundraiser thing, and I came in third place and, and got a, a, a home stereo unit with a with an 8-track player in it. So yeah. that was, that was I would, awesome. I'd put my amp in my trunk. <laughs> 
And then I'd have my oh. my uh, speakers. I'd put me two six one nines under my back and a couple in my doors, and you know, just the loudest I could play it up and down the roads. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, nothing nowadays you nothing go to compared jail. to what you get nowadays with the with yeah this, with the speakers. But I, I have one here for a 1966 or a 68 Pontiac Tempest Firebird GTO under and this is the one that mounted under the dash remember you mount your bracket yeah up and then you stick it under the dash um an eight track player brought 199 dollars on a buy now i've got a uh a rare realistic uh eight track player realistic was was radio shack yeah it's brand. radio shack's brand. yeah they, they got uh 23 mm. bids uh 102 dollars and 50 cents for that one mm. and i got a a craco or two Krakos here, and those are Krako was the was the cheapo one that you that you if you couldn't afford anything at all and just you, barely get you, in, you get, you get a Krako. Krako. It was it was the garbage one, and these <laughs> these are bringing a hundred dollars a piece. <laughs> Probably more than they were new. <laughs> I believe that was. I'm pretty sure that was more than they were new. Yeah, I have a realistic TR eight thirty three eight eighty three. Excuse me, eight track type deck. Now, this one's for a house. Uh, it says it's been professionally serviced. Brought $179 on a buy now. I've got a, uh, here's one that looks <clears throat> looks rough. An automotive eight-track stereo player, vintage car, audio, uh, mounts under dash. Oh, it's got a key lock to, to release it even. Oh, wow. And, man, this, this looks beat up. It looks like an early version of it, you know, where they take the face plates off. Yeah, probably so. So there's to keep people from stealing your eight track yeah. player. Uh eighty five dollars for that one. Man, this is I'm sure that mm. you know, we should go out in the dump and start digging. I'm <laughs> telling you because they're bringing a little money. Because I don't think anybody saved these. Once once you once you upgraded from an eight track, you generally didn't you, keep it. You ditched it. <laughs> now I have a, a bunch of eight track uh, tapes at the house, but nothing to play them on. Uh, so I probably ought to try to get me one of those. That's what my parents had a quadraphonic eight track, which was, which you know, it'd play back four heads at a time, so that you could have front, front left and right, and rear re left and right, right back in the seventies. And they had a, they had baby driver. Uh, Simon and Garfunkel, and that was the coolest thing is that the car would go around the room with the uh, speakers. So, yeah, but there were there weren't a whole lot of of uh, quadraphonic tapes really put out. I remember when they first started doing the faders, yeah. you know, the front and back and the yeah, left and right, yeah. and then I thought that was really something. Yeah, and that's when my parents weren't weren't huge, weren't hippies or whatnot. And <laughs> most of your most of your quadraphonic stuff would have been like <clears throat> Jimi Hendrix and Pink Floyd kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, you're psychedelic. Yeah, so they. They, I don't know really why in the world they got that nice of a stereo, but it mm. was really cool to show off to my friends. Is what I remember. <laughs> yeah. Now I have several of these uh, Panasonic A807s, um, A-Track players, and they all say professionally serviced. But uh, two of them brought one hundred sixty-nine dollars, and one brought one hundred fifty-nine dollars. So you've got you got more pricey ones than I do. Well. Uh, I'm getting down but to But I've dropped down to like some $50 ones, and these are all uh, uh, repaired <laughs> working ones. So you can, you can get you a, uh, a working one for 50 bucks if you're if you're not too particular about it. I wouldn't be but too particular as long as it played. Vintage mini 8-track <clears throat> player, complete service, new belt, working, 50 mm, bucks. Might be cheaper than the tapes here. All right. Well, we got us a caller on the line. All right. Hello, caller. Hello. You're on the air. Yeah, what's uh, some Bill Cosby records worth? I don't know. I'd say they probably took a hit recently, but uh, let, me, nah. <laughs> let me check. They more capable when he's dead, ain't it, won't they? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, like, like right, at the, right at the time, they'll, they'll shoot up some. Yeah. We're getting a lot of feedback back there. I just wonder what they're dead at worth now. All right, hang on just a second. Let me. Can you turn your radio down, sir? Can you turn your radio down? I don't have it on. Mm, oh. We're getting funny feedback. Maybe it's your phone. Okay. Um, what uh, what specific albums do you have, or is it just a whole bunch of? A couple of them. I'm just wondering what they might be worth. Um, 
autographed ones go for about 150 and other ones go between 30 and 5 and average about 20 well if they're in the case or if they're out of the case does that make them more or less valuable even though they're yeah they does they, they does cover it make them a little more valuable alright appreciate it alright thanks Okay. Funny. Funny sound. But and uh, I've we had some Cosby records when I was a kid, and and I wish my mom hadn't let me play them because they're me and my brother completely well, scratched you, them out and wore them. If you out, give those so. a little time, you know, maybe they'll. Yes, I've <clears throat> I've even got the the skips on them memorized from where I on listen the to. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we were talking about you know how cheap you could buy some of those players, but I've got an an Iron Maiden. Says Killers eight track tape. That's their second album from 1981 uh, on EMI Records. Brought 125 dollars on a buy it now. Wow! Just one eight track tape. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty rare find. Yeah. Yeah, I don't say whether or not it plays, but I'm assuming it does for that kind of money. Uh, yeah, you'd like to think you're not just getting the case. <coughs> yeah. Right. Well, with that, let's uh, let's take a commercial break and we'll look up some stuff. Too. All right. You tuned into your hometown station. Come on back for some more and let's talk antiques on Thunder Radio. When I was growing up in Coffee County, I saw firsthand the need for good paying jobs. When I was county mayor, working with other dedicated Coffee Countyans, we recruited $240.6 million in industry investment in Coffee County. 2,968 new good paying jobs to Coffee County. I'm David Pennington, candidate for Coffee County Mayor. And I ask you to join me and help make Coffee County an even better place to live and work. Hello, I'm Pickin' Rick T from CFC, best place to get you used auto parts and all types of metals to repurpose for your needs. Just take a drive down 55, see this handsome guy, stop on by. Check out our computer for hundreds of autos to locate the make and the model of the part you need. Two dollar fee is all you pay. Sign in, get a hand stamp, it's good for all day. Bring in your tools, get the parts you need pulled, and use a wheelbarrow to lighten the load. Pay for your parts, prices you'll be fond of. Each part's price the same, Chevy or Honda. Get exchange warranty for 30 days too. Swap out the parts you don't need for the parts that you do. Happy picking. My name's John Hirschman. I'm one of the original six owners of PH Rentals. Started the company 30 years ago when we saw a need for individual, construction, industrial, and commercial storage. We have trailers and containers for lease and sell. Our physical location is 2947 Old Manchester Highway, Tullahoma, Tennessee. Uh, my phone number is area code 931-273-4252. The Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester has been voted as having the best hamburgers in Manchester. Hometown atmosphere, historical memorabilia, and of course those great burgers, salads, chicken, and so much more. It's the Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester. Call in orders at 728-4452. You can also order at the convenient outdoor curb service. Hamburgers are made the old-fashioned way at the Jiffy Burger, Manchester's finest hamburgers. Open 7.30 until 9, Monday through Saturday. We would like to thank Dr. David Florence for supporting Let's Talk Antiques. See Dr. Florence at 804 Kalon Street in Manchester for all of your medical needs. Call 728-5522 for your appointment today. Most insurances accepted. Kay and Greg Gillum have added another touch of excellence to their furniture business. Now a newly stocked 20,000 square foot Badcock Home Furniture and More location in Tullahoma, Tennessee. Locally owned and operated and offering the same friendly professional service with the best prices on name brand products like their sister store in Winchester, Tennessee has for years. Visit the new Tullahoma location and shop name brand bedroom suits, electronic department with computers, tablets, 4K televisions and accessories. A large complete appliance center to fit the style of any household. Beautiful selection of rugs that complement any person's taste. A variety of living room combinations all in one large showroom. That's right, Badcock Home Furniture and More has added a new location. 373 West Lincoln Street, Tullahoma, Tennessee. Offering special prices year-round. Financing is always available. Speedy delivery to your home or office. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And Sunday noon to 5 p.m. Call 
The day the Lord created hope could be the same day He created spring. Springtime's here. It's a good time to get our air conditioners checked out before those hot summer days get here. We've been here for a little over 35 years. It's been our pleasure to serve our community. We'd like to thank you for Tullahoma's finest and from all of us to all of you. Thank you. All right, we're back. And we, we pulled up some, uh, some eight track tapes on the, um, during the break. And uh, to, to compete with Ronnie, I found a, a seven Ramones eight track tapes of uh, you know different different uh different albums from them uh, classic punk rock eight hundred dollars was uh, was the price for that now isn't that amazing that, that's pretty cool that's I guess that's a big ramones fan who's getting it yeah. on all the formats you can get yeah, a little over a hundred dollars a piece yeah and here's one that's it's the band name is goblin roller and it's an it says it's from italy and I have never heard of the band, Me and, uh, and the, but you know it went for with 18 bids, 586 dollars. So somebody in Italy, somebody wanted, wanted the Goblin Roller, wanted, wanted the Goblin Roller. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> and, I've never uh, heard of them. Here's another that's a uh, 84 uh, eight-track tapes, uh, including uh, albums by Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Beatles, Rolling Stones. Uh, nine bids on that went for five hundred dollars. So, if you have an old collection of eight-track tapes, you could you could potentially get some money for them. Yeah. Here's a sealed eight-track lot of country artists with uh, seventy-two tapes. So these are these are new sealed uh, eight tracks that were never opened. Um, those went for it was four hundred and eighty dollars was to buy it now on that and it it's sold. Here's your, uh, here's your, you might need this to finish your collection, Ronnie. Here's Madonna Like a Virgin. Sealed. Oh, yeah. A track. Gotta have that. <laughs> the buy and now, and that was $400 that they got for that one album. Wow, and that'd be like the 80s, uh, what, early 80s. Yeah, probably. wouldn't it be nice to, let's say, <laughs> run across that? I got Madonna on a track here. Yeah. <laughs> here's a uh, Velvet Underground with and Nico produced by Andy Warhol. Uh, these and this is used three hundred and sixty dollars. Now I got something that's neat here. Here is a Panasonic eight track player. Yeah. And with it you get twenty four eight track tapes. Okay. Uh about four hundred dollars. Cool. And that's so that's a nice home model there. That was have you a player and some tapes to listen to. Now here here's somebody hmm. gosh, two hundred and twelve uh, eight track tapes, classic rock, Bowie, Stones, Dylan, Bob Seeger. I can see Alice Cooper, Fleetwood Mac, Styx. You know, a lot of Ted Nugent, a lot of, you know, classic, classic rock. Yeah. 212 of those untested tapes, 36 bids, $315. Now, there's a good start on, on a collection. I have that was or a did. collection. I have a rare Velvet Underground. Uh, produced by Andy Warhol. Verve eight track tape wrought three hundred and sixty dollars. Mm-hmm. On a buy now. Oh, and you remember the mm. Columbia House Record Club? Deal? Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, here is a Columbia House Record Club eight track tape of Motley Crue with their sh- nineteen eighty three Shout at the Devil album. Wow. Three hundred and twenty five dollars. I brought some money. <laughs> And like I say, that's even like the Columbia Houses, you know, that's that's the cheaper version. Yeah. Susie and the Banshees, the Scream album from 1978, $325. Yeah, these old types are bringing some money. They are, yeah. And I say, if you, if you have them in plastic, mm. you can get a lot. But like that Susie and the Banshees was not, you know, not sealed. No. I, You're just finding here looking at big it. fans, you know. Nah, but now, you know, it looks like it's in good shape, but... Um, 68 track tapes, uh, Zeppelin, Grateful Dead, Boston, classic rock stuff. 31 bids on that went for $300. And they are not, they're not guaranteeing these to be in, you know, pristine condition. Not nah, good. Most of them probably won't. Ah, here's our first quadraphonic one. It is uh, Credence Clearwater Revival, Credence Gold. 
in quadraphonic. Oh, wow. 16 bids on that, $291. We were just talking about that yeah. while ago. You were talking about your parents' quadraphonic system. Elvis Presley, eight tracks, sing <laughs> songs of Christmas uh, with plastic case and signed photo. I don't believe that's a, uh, I believe that's a printed uh, signed photo. Yeah. Uh, seven bids, $277. <laughs> Now, I have something here. Maybe you can tell me what this is. It's kind of weird. It says 1969-70 Camaro Chevelle Nova 8-track stereo tape player demo tape. Oh, so well, that's the demo tape that came with your 1969-70 oh, okay. Camaro and Chevelle and your Novas. So when you bought it, it had a tape in it. It had a tape in it, and it would probably, like, it would... It would talk about how cool your car was and then have like you know some you know popular songs of the day on it too now that is that, that is rare that's well it, it brought 290 dollars <laughs> with 29 bids there you go so if you had a 69 or 70 camaro or a chevelle or no Nova, there you go. that would be nice to have in it that would be great man you, when you took it to car shows that was that's what you'd want that'd be a real conversation that's piece. what you'd want to have sitting punched in it uh, here's uh, Generation X 8-track tape, which was uh, Billy Idol's band before he went off as a solo artist. Three bids uh, on that, $275. Now that's some money. <laughs> it's, in a, it's, in a, it's in a box. Billy Idol probably, he's probably got cases of these. He needs, we need to tell him about this so he can start feeding them to eBay and make yeah, some money. Yeah, run them on eBay <laughs> make you some money, Billy, if you're listening. Yeah. I saw him, I saw him at Bonnaroo a couple of years ago. I had a tooth crack when I was at Bonnaroo. Yeah. And I had to <clears throat> leave and on a Saturday morning and have have tooth uh, work on. <clears throat> and uh, and I was hanging out at the Coffee County Conference Center waiting on on a ride for somebody to come pick me up. And uh, and they were doing uh, Super Jam rehearsals. And uh, and Billy was was one of the featured artists that wasn't you know he was just came in for that show yeah. and he came walking through the lobby and he was like he was like five foot tall and i could not believe <laughs> how short he Billy, was yeah and all the music videos mm. from when i was a kid and watching him you know he looked like he was you know six foot tall you know big guy but i guess when you're the singer of a rock band and you're short you probably surround yourself with short they make you <laughs> look bigger <laughs> could you say hey billy i cracked my teeth singing to your songs <laughs> 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 That was that was a rough Saturday at Bonnery. I bet it was. You don't want to you don't want to do that. <laughs> okay, now I have the Beatles here. Now this is a Japanese issue, a track tape wow. on Apple, and it's got Japanese lettering across the top of it. Um, Two hundred and fifty dollars. That is pretty One cool. Uh, I've got a case like of twenty four original Beatle uh, Capital uh, eight track tapes. And they they brought two hundred and fifty dollars as a buy it now. They should have they should have asked for more. Can you imagine the Beatles singing, you know, I wanna hold your hand in Japanese? Oh, that probably wasn't <laughs> <a minute. laughs> Okay, so here here was the, the twenty four Beatle tapes mm. for uh for the two fifty buy it now. Yeah. Here was a George Harrison Cloud Nine uh solo album and uh and they just let that one bid up and 35 bids brought 247 dollars and 50 cents now that's some money so i believe those those 24 well, beetle tapes would have brought know, more than that Harrison was a great guitarist he was a really yeah, good guitarist. he was quite he's he was quite an innovator now i think he was ahead of his time you know yeah he he really he did some cool stuff oh here you go here's uh more of the monkeys factory sealed 1967 uh, eight track, uh, two hundred and thirty-five dollars and fifty cents after fifteen bits. It says it's in a clam shell. Yeah, a clam shell. What's so that's, that? that's the plastic. Uh, oh, okay. Thing, you know, that that, that's called a clam shell. Open. Yeah. So when you see the sorry, y'all can't see my hand movements on the radio. Just you say <laughs> I have a clam shell. <laughs> <laughs> it opens like a clam. Uh, here's Soft Cell. Remember that band from the '80s, the dance dance band. Mm. I believe they were British. Uh, can, so here's a uh, says hard to find, uh, probably so. Four bids on that, two hundred and thirty-five dollars. Man, 
That's I've got to go steal all my dad's old eight tracks. I've got a bunch of them just somewhere. sitting in a box. <laughs> I haven't opened the box in years. I think I need to start digging. Yeah, I do. And I think I might I can I think I might start digging tonight. There you go. I have a vintage seventies top one mega toy talking robot with twelve eight track tapes. Oh, I guess that was the robot's voice. That was I remember those toys were that um <clears throat> it was kinda one of those things where it would ask you like like the math questions and if you answer one, you know, one is 12 and two is 15 or whatever, and you would push the program button to to select your proper answer, and it would tell you whether you were right or not kind of thing. So mm -hmm. it was pretty, it w wasn't very, so, <laughs> in retrospect, it's not very impressive. But to me, the like they keep was. recycling the same <laughs> ideas. Nowadays, it's in the cloud. Right, exactly, you know, yeah, yeah. Same thing, but it's in the cloud, the answers yeah. are... And they're a little more sophisticated. You can shuffle up the questions a little easier. But they keep recycling <laughs> the same ideas there. Oh, yeah, sure. I have 40 vintage rock 8-track tapes. Led Zeppelin 1, 2, 3. Houses of the Holy. Outdoor. Uh, $225. Oh, and here... Seems like a good buy. That, uh, that, where I told you that, that band, uh, Ghost had, was releasing their, their eight track. Yeah, okay, yeah. so I found one on eBay. They say that they are sold out and that, and so somebody has sold this one for $200. Wow. <laughs> right. Sold out kind of makes you want it more. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, I guess we'll take us a commercial break and come back with more. The day the Lord created hope could be the same day He created spring. Springtime's here. It's a good time to get our air conditioners checked out before those hot summer days get here. We've been here for a little over 35 years. It's been our pleasure to serve our community. We'd like to thank you for Tullahoma's finest and from all of us to all of you. Thank you! My name's John Hirschman. I'm one of the original six owners of PH Rentals. Started the company 30 years ago when we saw a need for individual construction, industrial, and commercial storage. We have trailers and containers for lease and sell. Our physical location is 2947 Old Manchester Highway, Tullahoma, Tennessee. Uh, my phone number is area code 931. 273-4252. The Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester has been voted as having the best hamburgers in Manchester. Hometown atmosphere, historical memorabilia, and of course those great burgers, salads, chicken, and so much more. It's the Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester. Call in orders at 728-4452. You can also order at the convenient outdoor curb service. Hamburgers are made the old-fashioned way. At the Jiffy Burger, Manchester's finest hamburgers. Open seven 30 until 9, Monday through Saturday. We would like to thank Dr. David Florence for supporting Let's Talk Antiques. See Dr. Florence at 804 Kalon Street in Manchester for all of your medical needs. Call 728-5522 for your appointment today. Most insurances accepted. Kay and Greg Gillum have added another touch of excellence to their furniture business. Now a newly stocked 20,000 square foot Badcock Home Furniture and More location in Tullahoma, Tennessee. Locally owned and operated and offering the same friendly professional service with the best prices on name brand products like your sister store in Winchester, Tennessee has for years. Visit the new Tullahoma location and shop name brand bedroom suits, electronic department with computers, tablets, 4K televisions and accessories. A large complete appliance center to fit the style of any household. Beautiful selection of rugs that complement any person's taste, a variety of living room combinations all in one large showroom. That's right, Badcock Home Furniture and More has added a new location, 373 West Lincoln Street, Tullahoma, Tennessee. Offering special prices year-round. Financing is always available. Speedy delivery to your home or office, open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Sunday noon to 5 p.m. Call 931-222-4353. When I was growing up in Coffee County, I saw firsthand the need for good paying jobs. When I was county mayor, working with other dedicated Coffee Countyans, we recruited $240.6 million in industry investment in Coffee County. 
2,968 new good paying jobs to Coffee County. I'm David Pennington, candidate for Coffee County Mayor, and I ask you to join me and help make Coffee County an even better place to live and work. Hello, I'm Pickin' Rick T from CFC, best place to get you used auto parts and all types of metals to repurpose for your needs. Just take a drive down 55, see this handsome guy, stop on by. Check out our computer for hundreds of autos to locate the make and the model of the part you need. Two dollar fee is all you pay, sign in and get a hand stamp, it's good for all day. Bring in your tools, get the parts you need pulled, and use a wheelbarrow to lighten the load. Pay for your parts, prices you'll be fond of, each part's price the same, Chevy or Honda. Get exchange warranty for 30 days too, swap out the parts you don't need for the parts that you do. Happy picking! Alright, we're back, and I just love that music Tiffany plays, it's always upbeat, get you going in the mornings. But, uh, speak- we're in the morning now, aren't we? We're yeah, we're in, the, we're in the morning. We were kind of in the morning before, but now we're more in the morning. And now we're really in the morning <laughs> because I have to get here a lot quicker. So we were talking about 8-track tapes when we left, and we're going to kind of swap channels here a little bit and talk about cassettes. So we can't talk about cassettes without talking about cassette players. So these vintage cassette decks, says in the battle of the home audio tape formats, the cassette beat the 8-track hands down. Imagine that. Oh, yeah. Cassettes were more reliable than 8-tracks, and they're... Diminutive size meant manufacturers such as Sony could make portable tape players for them. Now, the uh, Sony Walkman 1979 was the Apple iPod of its day, but home audio enthusiasts also liked the format. Purchasing receivers with built in cassette decks so that tracks on an LP. Playing on a nearby turntable could easily be captured and recorded on their cassettes. Yes, much kinda easier like to listen to cassettes in your car than your records in your car. Kind of like their yeah. old mixtapes, you know. <laughs> yeah. Everybody used to make their mixtapes with the ones they liked on them. So it says leading to the era of the mixtape. Mm-hmm. Da da. Cassette decks were also a favorite of fans of the Grateful Dead, which oh, allowed yeah. tapes to bring microphones and small decks to its shows so that they could record them and then distribute them for free. Yeah, there's a huge uh, online thing now where you can you can just share Grateful Dead shows going oh, wow. way back, way back. And now they've all been digitized and, and alphabetized, and you can find, oh, well, what was a 1973 performance of so-and-so, you know. Just and, look it and up you to can, you can just search it. Yeah, there's, there's stuff online to... That they've got all everything organized. And I stuff. love going to YouTube yeah. and watching those old concerts. Yeah. As long as you're not making money off of it, they they'll they they don't mind you sharing and trading. Sometimes stuff, I'll so. spend all day long just listening, you know, to old oh, yeah. concerts, There's and I really do like the old stuff. You know, I like the fifties and the sixties. I like the doo wop. You know, I like it all. But uh, anyway, it says every electronics manufacturer makes set decks, but standouts included. Iowa, A-I-W-A, yeah. maybe you've got a better pronunciation. No, that, Iowa is how I think. <laughs> whose mini systems link themselves to the small set format. And um, the Kia, A-K-A-I, Akai. Akai yeah, yeah. decks, were content to just do quality right along the right horizontal. The GXC 352D with angled VU meters made lots of users feel like they were running professional studio gear in their homes. Now with that, we have pulled up some old cassette players. I've got a uh, an old Pioneer car stereo super tuner with cassette player uh, tested. And the buy it now was two hundred and nineteen dollars. This is a really unusual looking uh cassette car cassette player. It's, it's two take up two spaces like the, the big ones do nowadays. And uh and it's got a dial on the front of it that looks like the old style thermostat dial, which I assume is a FM tuner. <laughs> now you know it hasn't been that long ago, you know, to me. 
you know, that cars would come out. They still came out with cassette players, and there would be a little uh, thing in the bottom of them where you could order a, a CD player optional. Yeah, yeah, true. And nowadays, you know, it's just they come with the, the CD players. But, yeah. Uh, it just seems to me like it hadn't been that long ago. The last, um, I got a RAV4 last year, and it uh, it came with a cassette deck, and I didn't really need a cassette deck, so uh, so I I, uh, I got me a, a replacement stereo, which is the first thing time I've done that since I was out of college. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And uh, and the new ones uh, come with the with DVD players, and it's a CD DVD player for oh, your little wow. touchscreen thing on I think it. That's so, okay. but it and it's supposed to disable the uh, player while you're. While you're in motion, it's supposed to disable the player. Uh, but that's kind of an optional thing. You have to hook up the wire to do it. So. Well, now, my Trans Zam <laughs> still got a cassette player in it. And, you know, I've got uh, my little box with all my cassettes in it I've had forever that I'll just carry out there and put it in the car and pop one in and listen to my cassettes. Uh, that's what my uh, my daughter's Honda that she had for a while was came with a cassette player. And she went through. I had a box of of old cassettes that I still had, mm. and so she was she was pulling out my Rush and Led Zeppelin stuff for that I had from my yeah, school. The stuff I still plays as good as anything, you know, as far as well, I'm concerned. Well, some of them still played. Some of them squealed like a baby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I told her just to throw those out, but I yeah. probably should have kept them for the for the case. Yeah, or, <laughs> or kept them for what we're going to show you they're worth here in a little while. Exactly. But, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I've got uh, some home systems here. I have a Sony JH3 digital. No, 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 no. That's a video cassette. We don't want to talk about that. Uh, we have an auto reverse cassette deck here made in Japan. Uh, about $1,200 on a buy it now. now. Auto reverse was a big deal. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, because you used to have to just. You know, flip them over. Yep. Yep. We, uh, when I was, when I started in Nashville, we would make pitch tapes to, to pitch the songs to, to artists. And, uh, and we had some really, really nice cassette decks. We, we would even run alignment tapes on them and things like that to make sure, you know, they had you could run. give them the best quality that you could because you didn't, you know, you wanted to give your cassette the best chance you could of somebody recording your stuff and now they just email mp3s yeah i remember the old head cleaners you, <laughs> yeah. you know every now and then you'd yeah. run a head cleaner through right. it to, to make sure your heads were clean on it i have a um another one of those um well let me see here let's pass that a phase linear 7000 <clears throat> series Two cassette deck players, same as the Pioneer, $999. Oh, that's a fancy looking. <coughs> it slides in a rack. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a rack mounted cassette player. There yeah. You go. That's a pretty serious one. But and he I'm, had two, you know, you could play yeah. one and tape it with the other one. I'm pretty disappointed in my vintage uh, eBay uh, cassette decks. It's really like, there's not really much of anything that's, that's worth a lot other than those couple of top ones there that's why i was sitting here passing and, uh, over some of them i, I would think the, i wanted uh, to talk about it but it was just be just like another one i'd already looked at okay i have a pioneer keh 6050 stereo cassette player uh has a Celine fox body mustang 999 dollars looks like one part of a system you know you get the mm -hmm. the ones that have the tuners cassette players the, the photograph player on the top yeah, you yeah. know photograph player. the whole deal yeah well you want to should we take a commercial break here and then we can come back and and tell you uh that you're going to regret throwing away your old cassettes we can talk about something really interesting <laughs> okay my name's John Hirschman. I'm one of the original six owners of PH Rentals. Started the company 30 years ago when we saw a need for individual construction, industrial, and commercial storage. We have trailers and containers for lease and sell. Our physical location is 2947 Old Manchester Highway, Tullahoma, Tennessee. Uh, my phone number is area code 931. 
Hello, I'm Pickin' Rick T from CFC, best place to get you used auto parts and all types of metals to repurpose for your needs. Just take a drive down 55, see this handsome guy, stop on by. Check out our computer for hundreds of autos to locate the make and the model of the part you need. $2 fee is all you pay, sign in and get a hand stamp, it's good for all day. Bring in your tools, get the parts you need pulled, and use a wheelbarrow to lighten the load. Pay for your parts, prices you'll be fond of, each part's price the same, Chevy or Honda. Get exchange warranty for 30 days too, swap out the parts you don't need for the parts that you do. Happy picking! When I was growing up in Coffee County, I saw firsthand the need for good paying jobs. When I was county mayor, working with other dedicated Coffee Countyans, we recruited $240.6 million in industry investment in Coffee County. 2,968 new good paying jobs to Coffee County. I'm David Pennington, candidate for Coffee County Mayor, and I ask you to join me and help make Coffee County an even better place to live and work. The day the Lord created hope could be the same day he created spring. Springtime's here, it's a good time to get our air conditioners checked out before those hot summer days get here. We've been here for a little over 35 years. It's been our pleasure to serve our community. We'd like to thank you for Tullahoma's finest and from all of us to all of you. Thank you. The Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester has been voted as having the best hamburgers in Manchester. Hometown atmosphere, historical memorabilia, and of course those great burgers, salads, chicken, and so much more. It's the Jiffy Burger on the Hillsborough Boulevard in Manchester. Call in orders at 728-4452. You can also order at the convenient outdoor curb service. Hamburgers are made the old-fashioned way. At the Jiffy Burger, Manchester's finest hamburgers. Open 730 until 9, Monday through Saturday. Kay and Greg Gillum have added another touch of excellence to their furniture business. Now a newly stocked 20,000 square foot Badcock Home Furniture and More location in Tullahoma, Tennessee. Locally owned and operated and offering the same friendly professional service with the best prices on name brand products like their sister store in Winchester, Tennessee has for years. Visit the new Tullahoma location and shop name brand bedroom suits, electronic department with computers, tablets, 4K televisions and accessories. A large complete appliance center to fit the style of any household. Beautiful selection of rugs that complement any person's taste, a variety of living room combinations all in one large showroom. That's right, Badcock Home Furniture and More has added a new location, 373 West Lincoln Street, Tullahoma, Tennessee. Offering special prices year-round. Financing is always available. Speedy delivery to your home or office, open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Sunday noon to 5 p.m. Call 931-222-4353. All right, well, we're back once again. And now we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, just uh, some cassette types. Now, we're talking about just uh, cassette types like you have probably got laying around everywhere uh, that we listened to when we were younger. Um, and you'd be surprised some of the money these things are bringing um, yeah, so the the highest uh, the highest price one is just labeled rare old school hip hop cassette tape promo demo uh, Trenton, and it sixteen bids on that went for almost twenty five hundred dollars, uh, and so we had to look up and see what this was because it's just yeah, it's just a, a TDK or <sighs> Maxell cassette tape with a label pulled off and Trenton written across it. And you said this guy said he didn't even know. Yeah, it says, uh, what you're bidding on is a cassette I came across <laughs> while digging through some boxes. I don't know anything about the cassette, so I posted some snippets on my YouTube channel. And he has a link to it. He said, it's a pretty dope tape that I've been sitting on trying to do some homework and see what it is, but it's time to throw in the towel and put it for sale. I can't seem to figure out the artist. It has Trenton and somebody's name and phone number with a 212 area code, which is New York. So I figure it's from some someone out there. It was in a box <clears throat> with other promo demo type stuff. Hard to part with. Great addition to your collection. So, and that went for almost $2,500. He threw in the <laughs> towel, all right. And he <laughs> done all right. I'd like to find a cassette. Six, Sixteen other people knew what it was or wanted it. Yeah, a lot of it seems like these really high-priced mm. things are demo tapes or the uh, like an original mixed tape or a mix of a like 
80s punk rock bands that were regional kind of acts. So yeah. Daniel Johnson, original cassette from 82, The What of Whom, master tape, uh, autographed certificate of authenticity, sold for $2,655. Wow. Now, <laughs> I say wow again uh, on that now because this thing has got like a little body with no head on it. It's just and a, looks like child's writing the what of whom. Yeah, just a hand drawn on, on the cover. Thing. Yeah, twenty six hundred and fifty five dollars. Come blew my little mind. Uh, next is a collection of one thousand three hundred and forty three uh, sealed tapes, uh, factory new. Uh, the example they show in the picture is the Velvet Underground uh, album. But so this is thirteen hundred original cassettes. And they went for uh, $1,500 with $25 shipping. I think you could ship 1,300 <laughs> cassettes for $25. I doubt it. I doubt it either. But that, I guess that's, that's a lot of cassettes and yeah. a lot of packing. And um, But, you know, $1,500, you know, they got a little over a dollar a tape for them. Yeah. So uh, we have a Vincent Gallo demo cassette from 1984. The way it is, experimental psych. Down, down tempo, tempo folk. folk. So yeah, uh, so it's like um, a a demo tape from yeah. from this guy. Uh, they were asking fifteen hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. It took somewhere between that and thirteen hundred. So yeah, so they done all right. And yeah, this is good. just like we say, just another uh, uh, just a uh, um, uh, tape that they just put a sticker on and. Yeah, I would say it was just a, a Max L tape. Yeah. Um, uh, next one is like it's a, I don't know, it's it's kind of oddly labeled. I can't can't just let's skip that. <laughs> I've got one here that says AI Jones, something I want to say, unreleased Motown album R and B rhythm and blues. I assume that's 1995. Rock twelve hundred fifty nine dollars. Yeah, now this is I recognize those because I used to label tapes <laughs> like this when I worked at the publishing studio, and you would really get in trouble. This is an un- unreleased <laughs> album, so I'm just kind of surprised there's, that there's even, copyright that, issues. There. Yeah, that eBay would would let this go, <laughs> but uh, but this is yeah, Polydor. Uh, if they were to have caught this listing, somebody would have gotten in trouble and could potentially still get in trouble. And that's what I was going to say. Could yeah. still get in trouble. Yeah, but this is twelve hundred and fifty dollars. So maybe yeah. somebody's willing to get in trouble for twelve hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, so, right. or, or doesn't for understand what tape. they've done. Here's an uh, U two Octune Baby, one single, <clears throat> uh, promo pack, uh, CD and cassette. Uh, Ten bids on it went for one thousand two hundred and forty-two dollars. Wow! Wow! <laughs> yeah, it's all I can say is wow. I got a Maestro Manny, Jamel Rare Hip Hop LP demo tape, nineteen ninety-four ninety-five, yeah. Brooklyn, New York, thousand twenty-five dollars with twenty-eight bids. Wow! So there's another yeah. demo tape. I bet there's a you know the rap artists record <clears throat> all kinds of demos before they before they do their actual album. So there's probably a lot of stuff like that floating around. If you're in the if you were in their friend zone and you were getting getting copies of their demos, there's probably that, probably stuff like that to be found. I'd say what that's exactly what that is. Yeah. So you're right about that. Here is a <clears throat> May. This is from Italy. The the name of the band is Mayhem, and the uh, the album title is Death Crunch Demo Tape from 1991. Death Crunch Demo Tape. <laughs> so this would be another hardcore kind of just demo <laughs> tape uh, with a letter from one of the members. Uh, they were asking $2,200, and they got somewhere between 1200 and and 1000 so still they, not bad for the They done all right. Yeah, I think, I think they <laughs> yeah. should be happy. I have a rare old school hip hop rap set tape promo demo advance various blends. Uh brought a thousand and nine dollars with six bids. Hmm. And here's a uh U two Joshua Tree uh gold <clears throat> cassette. 
what is it? Tour invite. Okay, so this is like a promo where you try to get somebody to cover your your tour. Hmm. So this was the Joshua Tree tour, which is where they really skyrocketed and came <clears> on. Uh, promo cassette. They were asking fourteen hundred dollars, and they got somewhere between a thousand and eight hundred. So hmm. I have one that same one here. Uh, Brought seven hundred ninety-eight dollars for ten bids. There you go, and another uh, uh, Tool uh, band uh, mm. demo cassette. Um, they got that for six hundred and fifty dollars. Somebody sold that one for. Is that uh, Minor much? James? Yep. Keeping yep. up a perfect circle. And uh, here's another. Here's an old punk band, Repulsion. None more negative. Nineteen eighty demo cassette. They were asking eight hundred, and they got about six hundred for it. Man, that's that's money. That's you know, stuff like that. That All is right. money. Well, with that, we've uh, we've run another show down and uh, wow. ready to go. I didn't realize we'd done burn up an hour. Thanks for being here, guys. 